today's video, we're going to be installing an FTECU bike side harness on a 2017 Yamaha FZ10. The kit that you see here is essentially what you're going to get when you order from us. This is our shop harness, so that's why it looks that way. But this is out of the box as it came that's going to be installed on a bike. You're going to get these both, so that's why we're doing this in a video. This looks more complicated than it actually is. It's really not that big of a deal. There's instructions included. You're effectively adding some pins into the harness that snaps into the ECU. There's no splicing that's going to be required. Everything fits into the exact terminals as a factory, and uh, it's very straightforward. So we're going to go over that today, and we'll go over some of the pros and cons for this kit. All right, now access to this ECU on this particular bike is very easy. It's inside this side panel over here. Now's a good time, if you haven't already done it, because of the fact that it's exposed, we recommend a good set of high-quality frame sliders. We're obviously fans of the Woodcraft, since that's what we developed with those guys years ago with this bike. Uh, but these are nice because, you know, like beyond, obviously, trying to protect your frame, radiator, and your engine from damage, your ECU's in here, and that's very expensive. So anyway, uh, there's going to be two screws, one up here and one down here. We've already taken it out. This panel, you can see with just one hand, slides off. This piece of plastic comes right off. You're left with the ECU, slides out. Two connectors you got to take off. This one is your standard style with a button in between. You just want to push that down and slide it up. This one here is a little different. There's a button in between. You're going to start to press that down and then lever this arm up and that'll come right out. And then we're going to go over step by step how to insert the pins into the harness. As I mentioned, there's no splicing required. Very straightforward. All right, so the ECU has been removed. These are the two connectors as they were. We're going to start working on the three row connector first. First thing to do, you're going to look inside here. You're going to see those white pieces. <clears throat> this looks more complicated at first than it actually is. And it's so easy, actually. I'm going to do it with one hand partially because I don't have any help here today, and also because I want to show you how easy it is. You don't need to strong arm this. You're going to use a little screwdriver. You're going to put it in there. And you're going to push down ever so slightly. You'll notice I'm doing this with one hand. Once you slide those tabs down, the pins going into the connector are free. Now you're going to look down here you're going to see two gray plastic plugs, and there's one right above it in the row above it. Those have to come out. So we're going to be removing the plugs in position 29, 45, and 46. And you're going to say, yeah, but which one is that? Well, it's hard to see in this video. I apologize. But these are numbered. There's numbers at the ends of these rows. Okay, so each of the rows have numbers at the beginning and the end. Just take a look if you get lost. But once again, we're going to take out those plugs from 29, 45, 46. Use a small pick and they'll pop right out. So I've loosened those with the pick. I'm going to use my tweezers in here just to show you what these look like. They come right out. This does not take much work. I'm going to take out three of these. Very easy. Okay, so now the plugs are removed. You can kind of see what's going on here. 45 and 46 are the third and fourth ones in, respectively, from the bottom right. So you can see those two are now removed between that black, white, and the black, blue. Pin number 29 is in the middle row, and it's going to be the fourth one in from the right. So you're going to have wires going into the first two, and then a plug, which you can kind of see in here, and then the fourth one over is pin number 29. So those are the three that we're going to take out. And next step, we're going to install the harness. Okay, so now we're ready to install the FTECU bike side harness into those unused ports. The yellow wire on the left here is going to go into position 45. The orange wire is going to go into position 46. And the red wire is going to go into position 29. Now something to keep in mind when you're looking at these, it's kind of hard to see, I have to apologize with the camera here, but there's that locking tab, which is conveniently shown on the bottom here. Uh, that locking feature actually needs to be facing up when you install it into the harness. Okay, so I'm having a hard time getting it there, but there it is up. And you're gonna say, what is up? 
okay, up on the connector is when this lever arm is on top. When you could read these numbers that I mentioned earlier, you're looking at it in the correct orientation. Okay, so in this case, make sure that your locking tab on those pins is facing up in this orientation. Now here's a pro tip for you to help get these wires in there. First of all, if it's the winter time and these wires are stiff, it's going to make it harder. Uh, it helps if the bike was running because they tend to be more pliable. If you need to heat it up with a hair dryer, feel free to do that. Don't use a heat gun, you're going to melt things. But having them warm will help. Then use that screwdriver that you used before and just part those wires very gently. Don't pull too hard. Don't push on anything. Just move them around a little bit and you want to get yourself a nice clean shot. So here I have a little bit of a gap there and I separated the wires so that there's a nice clean straight entrance in the pin number 29 there. But get these going in a situation like that so it looks approximately the same and you're going to have an easy time inserting those wires. Okay, so here those pins are installed into the connector. You can see the red on top and the yellow and the orange on the bottom there. Everything fits in as they should. They slide in nice and easily. You will hear, it's very quiet, but you can hear and feel a slight click as those locking tabs click in. So it's, you know, it is kind of helpful to make sure that your garage is quiet as you're installing these because then you could definitely ensure that they're locked in place. Once you do that, flip over this connector again. And you're going to use your screwdriver like we did the first time. And you're just going to reach in there on the bottom this time and slide it up. Just kind of rotate it up. And when those two come back up top like they were before, you're good to go. All right, now we're ready to install the last, the final wire. It's going to go into this four row connector. First thing we're going to do, you're going to see those white tabs again, just like the other connector. You're going to use your little screwdriver like you used before, and you're going to push in right here on this bottom one, straight in. Doesn't take much effort. This one takes a little bit more work than the other one. I can't do it with just one hand. You're going to need one hand to hold the connector and one hand to push the screwdriver. You'll hear the audible click, and these two pieces will then protrude. All right, so that's how it looks when you slide that tab in to pop up on top. I'm going to flip this over. Pin number 34, you can see there it's marked. It's that black with the white stripe. That's going to come out. You're going to slide that out and we're going to make our connection. All right, so here's the wire and pin removed. It just pulls out. You don't have to do anything else. Just a little tug on the wire. Be careful when you're doing this that you don't dislodge any of the others. They are all kind of sitting free right now. So if you pulled hard enough, you would just pull that connector off all the wires. You don't want to do that, obviously. So once you get this out, you're going to make a connection now to the FTECU bike side harness. There's going to be a lead here. There's two of them, actually. You're going to see one gold and one silver. Might be hard to see in this video. The gold one's on top. Slide the piece of the supplied heat shrink over that. And you're going to connect the gold into the silver that you just took out of the harness, out of pin 34. Then you are going to connect the silver from the FTECU bike side harness into where pin 34 was. You're then going to depress that tab, these two on top, they got to be pressed in simultaneously, and then this one is done. All right, so that pin is installed. The tabs are depressed and give a little tug on that wire back there to ensure that it's tight. It's not going to come out. Once you got that figured out, you're good to go there. You're going to plug these two in, as I mentioned just a second ago. You're going to notice that these two slide together. They don't lock. Okay, so there's no locking feature there. Don't force them. Don't try and get fancy here and solder these. Just take the piece of heat shrink that came with the kit, slide it up and over those so there's nothing exposed. You obviously don't want to short anything out here, right? So slide it so it's covering everything nice. Use your heat source carefully with the rest of the harness here and heat shrink that down so it's a nice clean connection. All right, so here's the connection after the heat shrink has been installed. It's still pretty warm at this point, but just take your fingers, squeeze around here to ensure that everything is sticking together nice. It should be pretty good, but it's nice to check. Can't do this when it's too hot, you'll burn your fingers, but once it's a little bit cooler, you can do that. And at that point, we're just about done. We're going to reinstall the ECU 
use a couple zip ties here. We're going to clean up these wires. Okay, so here now we tidied up our connections. I recommend a wire tie down here. You're going to have a little bit of wire slack to deal with. Uh, this is about as neat as it gets. These ones are pretty straightforward. I recommend using the two supplied wire ties to kind of branch onto each of these trunks for the harness. And then I use an extra one back over here to secure the harness to it. That way you're not going to strain their harness when you're trying to get to it. But that's it. If you route it like this, the factory wire terminal cover is going to protect everything. You won't see it and it'll fit very nice. When it comes to this piece as well, you got a few different options for where you could mount it. Here is fine. There are reasons for putting it there and there are reasons for not. If you want to put it under your seat, it will reach, but you're going to need to route that down in the subframe next to the tank here first before you make these connections. So it's up to you. Think about that. There are reasons for putting it here if you're running the active tune and you're going to be doing some work on this or if you're doing work on a dyno or tuning at the track, that kind of thing. Uh, there might be some reasons there for not having to take your seat off every single time. But of course, you got options. So we'll let you guys figure that out. But this concludes the installation of the harness. Next, we'll go over how to initialize the software and get this bike flashed. Okay, so we have the FTECU hardware installed on the bike, and now we're going to work on the software. You're going to go to FTECU.com under the download section, and you're going to download the software. It's free. You don't need to purchase the hardware in order to download it. You're going to run an install on your PC. You can't do this on a Mac. It must be a PC. And once you run that setup, you're going to open it up, and you're going to see this. Now, you've got a couple different options. You can open up the file manager. If you're doing a new file, you get a couple different options here. You can load files from either third-party ECU images, which, you know, not going to spend much time on here today. I'll let you poke around there. But for most of you guys, most of our customers, you're going to be playing with these two options up here, either your stock ECU images or your unrestricted ECU images. The stock images are what they are. If you need to put your bike back to stock for some reason, you're going to utilize these. If you're here making changes to your ECU for performance, you're going to be coming in here to the unrestricted ECU images, and you're going to navigate to the file that you're going to select. In this case, 2017 FZ10. You're going to notice you have a few different options. These files are specific to the ECU. If you are unsure which file you need, don't guess. Take a look at the ECU. There is a sticker on it, and that sticker has the part number. Use the file that corresponds to that part number on the ECU. Click on that, and you'll see that it will download it from the FTECU server into your computer. This takes a couple seconds, depending on your connection speed. But it will bring it into the FTECU software. You can close this, and you'll notice that it brings it in over here. At this point, you are free to start making changes to any of the parameters as you so choose. I'm going to close this, and I'm going to show you how to make an install onto the ECU. We're not going to go over the particular settings that you have in here. There's quite a bit of time we could spend talking about those. For our customers who order the software and hardware from us, you are going to get a base file, which you can use to get you started. That includes a rough fuel map and our refined throttle tables, in addition to the settings pre-configured that will give you the best performance and smoothness for your application. So in this case, we're going to go to device. And you're going to notice that you're getting a red dot, and it says error, no device found. And it's going to give you the account name that you've registered with here. In this case, you're going to take the harness, and you're going to plug it into the port on your computer, to the USB port. And you'll notice that the dot goes green. It identifies the serial number of your harness, and you are ready to install the file that you just changed onto the ECU. So click Write ECU. It's going to make a couple system checks. The first time you do this takes considerably longer because you have to load the module onto the ECU, but subsequent checks are pretty quick. Updates are pretty quick. It's going to ask you to connect ECU harness or key on. So at this point, your harness is connected to both your laptop and the six-pin harness on the bike. 
So ensure that they're connected. Turn the ignition switch to the on position. And then click OK. The software will make some more checks. And depending on the number of changes you made, it will begin to write the ECU. It'll erase and then write. The more changes you make, the longer it takes. The first time you do it, the longer it takes. Once it's complete, you get another prompt that says, write successful, you may disconnect. Turn the ignition switch to the off position. Disconnect the harness from the computer and the bike. Click OK. Close this other prompt. And you are good to go. Now at this point, your bike will run, but certainly start it up and ensure that there's no issues. Save the file that you made a change to. We recommend that you save each and every time you make a new flash, you save a file. Don't overwrite the old. Use a revision schema that makes sense to you. You don't want to overwrite your old data because if you make a change that you're not happy with, you're going to want to go back to that old file. So we're going to let you figure out what works there for you, but I recommend some discipline to keep your files straight. Now at this point, you should be good to go. If you have any issues whatsoever, feel free to reach out to us. We can oftentimes answer all of your problems very quickly. So any questions, feel free to reach out. Otherwise, ride safe.